All right, what's up, everybody? We're back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about the NBA Sixth Man of the Year race. I think it's a very interesting competition and conversation. Um, the race is getting really, really close between a couple people. And I think there's a lot of really good candidates this year. I want to talk about them here in today's video. Thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I really appreciate it. It really helps out a lot. Link to my Twitter description down below. And uh, yeah, don't waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. So the NBA six Man of the Year race. Um, I think it's a very interesting conversation. I feel like as the season's gone on, we've seen more and more kind of people, you know, kind of be in the race, out of the race and stuff like that. But I feel like it's going to come down to the wire. Really, I think it is. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the candidates that I think are at the top of the list and, you know, my thoughts on them uh, right here. So we'll start off um, Malik Monk. I feel like he's a guy that recently I think he became the odds-on favorite to win the Sixth Man of the Year award this season. Um, and he's been really, really good. I mean, ever since he got to Sacramento, even last year, he was a good candidate. But this year he's taking his game to another level. I talked about him a lot also in my most approved player for every team video that I did a couple days ago, which you missed that. You can go back and watch that video. Um, where Malik Monk's having a career season. He's averaging career highs in points and assists per game. Uh, he's averaging almost 16 points per game, three rebounds, and over five assists, which I think is so big for Monk that he's become more of just not just scoring, but his assists have jumped by five. I mean, he's averaging five assists per game. Um, he's playmaking a lot more. Instead of, you know, instead of just going to get buckets, 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 it's been a lot more facilitating, especially with the Kings bench not being, and the role players not being as great as they were last year when they had that insane kind of magical season. But this year, the depth hasn't really been like that. So Malik Malk has kind of had to take, had a little bit more on his plate in terms of controlling the bench unit and stuff like that. And he's done a really good job at it. Um, he's electric as well, especially recently. I think the last, like, couple weeks, it's been like his sixth man of the year conversation has kind of gone up, you know, since, honestly, since February started. Since February started, he's been really, really good. Uh, since the start of February, he's averaging almost 20 points per game, four rebounds, five assists. He's shooting 48% from the field, 35% from three. He's had a couple big games he's had. Well, in the first start of February, he started off like three, four, five, six, seven of the first or six of the first seven games. He had 20 or more points. He had a 39-point game against Minnesota where he had a huge second half um, in overtime to kind of come back and win that one. Uh, and then the last couple games, he's had 20 and four of the, uh, three of the past four games as well. Um, yeah, he's just electric off the bench. He's electric. You know, he can have the big scoring nights. Um, right now, he can play make as well and provide some energy for this Kings bench. That's really good. He finished top five in six man of the year voting last season. So um, it's very likely that he can win it again this year. You know, he's just been that good, you know. And I feel like the guy that he's been fighting with, the guy that I thought was kind of taking the six man of the year award this year, was Norman Powell from the Clippers. Uh, Norman Powell might not have the crazy statistics that Malik Monk has, but he's been shooting the ball lights out. The Clippers also been one of the best teams in the league. Norman Powell this season, uh, he's having a really good year. Even though the stats don't look as great as they have been the past couple years, he's been doing really good, averaging almost 14 points, two rebounds, and assists per game. But the shooting has been ridiculous. Uh, he's shooting 48% from the field, 43% from three, which is a career high, 82% from the free throw line. He's been shooting efficiently, shooting crazy from three, providing a lot of offensive spark for this other Clipper team. And he's one of the guys where I feel like if he's got it going, the Clippers are going to be very tough to beat. You know, uh, Norm Powell, I feel like, yeah, he's firmly in that six million year race um, because of the Clippers' success. But he, again, he's just been lining it up crazy. Even though he doesn't have the crazy statistics that Malik Monk and maybe other people do, he doesn't have a 30 point game this year, which is kind of crazy to think about how insane he can be, kind of like a flamethrower or whatever. But. He, he's been hot, too. And I feel like right now, they're my one and two. Isn't Malik Monk and Norman Powell going back and forth? Norman Powell also was finished top five in six man of the year voting last season. And I feel like he, that's just a great role for him being coming off the bench for the Clippers. Um, some other people that were in the race. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., he was my number one for a little while until he's kind of been slowing down recently. This, he's just one of those players. But Tim Hardaway Jr., this year, he's averaging 16 points a game, uh, three rebounds, one assist. He's shooting 40% from the field, 36% from three, 85% from the free throw line. Uh, he's kind of not he hasn't been great as of recently um honestly ever since february started he kind of has not been as great as he used to be since february he's averaging a little bit under 10 points per game shooting just 34 percent for the field 33 percent from three 
you know? Um, so, I mean, but that's just who he is. Tim Hardy Jr. is just one of those type of player, that type of player where he's a microwave, like the little definition of a streaky shooter. Like, if he's feeling it, he's going to be great. And he was feeling it to start the season. You know, the first couple months of the season, he was off. You take out February of the season, he's averaging 18, 3 and 1, shooting 42% from the field, 36% from three, a couple 30 point games, a 40 point game he had. And then the Mavericks are playing really solid. Even when Luka and Kyrie were going through the injuries, Tim Hardaway Jr. was in there playing really well. But, you know, then he has his moments like this where he's going through a rough stretch where he just can't seem to find the shot, you know, which is really, really tough. But he was in the conversation. He was my number one for a while, um, but now he's not there. Uh, a guy that's not going to get as much consideration he just should get because of his team success is Bogdan Bogdanovich. Honestly, I feel like if the Hawks were a playoff team, Bogdan Bogdanovich might be my number one in sixth man of the year. Bogdan Bogdanovich has been having a great season. Now, he is starting now because Trey Young is injured, but Bogdan Bogdanovich has been amazing this season. He's averaging career high in points per game, uh, averaging almost 17 points per game, three rebounds, three assists, and a steal. He's shooting 42% from the field, 37% from three, career high 91% from the free throw line. He's been actually absolutely ridiculous as well. Um, again, he's starting now, but if you take the games that he's not starting, starting in, like he he he's been phenomenal, you know what I mean? So yeah, Bogdanovich, if he if he was in the playoff race and the Hawks were like a top seven or top six team, he would be my sixth man of the year. But because they're a plane, they're tenth, they're under five hundred and stuff, it just you know he's not gonna get as much consideration as he should get. But he should be in the top five. He should finish in the top five because he's been really good. Uh, some other people that probably aren't gonna get as much consideration, and not win it, but should get you know some love and some you know talk about. Kyrs Levert for the Cavaliers. Uh, Levert, uh, this season, the Cavs have been very injured. They have not really had a full stretch of games where their whole lineup is together, and it's still they're injured. They're getting injured again. But Kyrs Levert has been consistently there. He re-signed in the offseason after kind of being disappointing. I feel like last year with the Cavaliers, since he's got to Cleveland, just wasn't as great as we thought he was going to be. But he's kind of bounced back this year. He's averaging 14, 4, and 5 with a steal. Shooting 41% from the field, 32% from three, 74% from the free throw line. He's had a couple double doubles recently. He's been putting together dang near triple doubles. I think he had a triple double this season, I want to say. Right? Yeah, he's had. Uh, no, he has not had a triple double, but he's gotten close. He's had a couple double doubles, especially in the last like week. He's had three double doubles. So, yeah, he's been really, really good in terms of all around game, also providing a scoring spark, playmaking for his others, and trying to hold down the fort while everybody else. Like guys like Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, and them have been in and out of the lineup all season. So credit to Kyrie for that. Uh, Bobby Portis, he'll probably finish top five um, for the Bucks. He's got the team success on his side uh, so far this year. He's averaging 13, seven and one, shooting almost 50 percent from the field, 38 percent from three, 79 percent from the free throw line. Um, he's been a big offensive spark for this Milwaukee Buck team off the bench as well. Just crazy to see how his game is kind of like looked. Like, I feel like in Chicago, he was more back to the basket. He wasn't taking a lot of whole lot of threes. Went to New York for that one year. It was really solid. But since he's got to Milwaukee, he's just transformed his game. And he's finished in the top of the sixth man of the year voting twice so far in his three years in Milwaukee. This year, he's being his fourth. Last year, he finished third in sixth man of the year. This year, he won't win it, but he'll probably finish top five. He's been big, spark affected offensively. Um, and that last guy I want to talk about is Nas Reed for the Timberwolves. You know, Nas Reed has been great especially now with Anthony Towns being injured he's not in the starting lineup but Nas Reed has been really really good as well off the bench uh he's averaging career highs in points per game tied for career high in rebounds tied for career high in assists shooting career high from three he's averaging t over 12 and a half points five rebounds and assists he's shooting 48 percent for the field 41 percent from three on almost five attempts as a big man 75 percent for the free line I love Nas Reed I love Nas Reed ever since he came to the league even at LSU he was really good went undrafted still crazy to me he went undrafted you know, maybe because he was a smaller center that played a different type of game, but he's really, really good, man. He's deserves some consideration and some respect in that race as well. But yeah, I think this is a very interesting race that's going to come down to the wire. Right now, I feel like I have Malik Monk slightly over Norman Powell, but I will not be surprised I know, if a week and a half or something that changes if Norman Powell has a good week or whatever. I feel like it's one of those awards where it's like, you know, it's just going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until the last week of the season. You know, but there's a lot more six men that I didn't mention. I feel like I've been really good. Guys like, I think Cole Anthony's been really good. Lonnie Walker's been really solid, even though he's missed a lot of time. Mo, Mo Wagner, uh, Russell Westbrook off the bench. 
has provided a lot. He's been really good. TJ McConnell, even off the bench, has provided a lot of different stuff. So there's a lot of really good six men out there. You know, but if we're talking about six men of the year award race, I feel like it's coming down between Norman Powell and Malik Monk. Uh, but won't be surprised if maybe I mean maybe if Tim Hardy Jr. has a good stretch to end the season, potentially maybe he sneaks his way into there. Bobby Portis, I won't mind seeing, maybe Nas Reed because you know, people's eyes are on the Timberwolves, and now we're calling Three Towns out. He's had some big games. Maybe he gets a lot more hype going down to the season. But I think it's between Malik Monk and Oren Powell. But it's just great to see that we have a lot of really good six men out there in the league. I want to give my credit to them. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you like the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I really appreciate it. Really upset a lot. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.